Hey everybody, welcome back to Get Heated. Today on... Uh oh. Ladies and gents, gents and ladies, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. It's great to have you. Today we're discussing, discussing rear main seal on a 12 valve Cummins, uh, specifically in a 96 Dodge Ram 3500. And uh, these ones aren't that hard, to be honest. It's just, you gotta do it right. So uh, let's get to it. So as you can see, this has been leaking for quite some time. It is not in good shape. But uh, before I clean this up, I'm going to go ahead and tap the seal out. At least there's no built up yuck on the back side. So we're just going to use a punch and tap it out. Probably don't need a giant hammer, but that's what I have handy. There we go. Old seal is out. If you could even still call that a seal. Well, I was just about to wipe things down and I realized it looks like I'm going to have to replace this, so I guess I don't have to worry about uh, cleaning it up. This is why I don't like it when people try to replace these seals with their little kit without pulling anything out, without taking this off. They drill into that seal. Well, here's a spot where somebody drilled straight into that aluminum. Here's other marks from that same thing being done that aren't quite as deep. But there's parts that are so bad that it's just going to tear this whole thing to shreds when I go to put the new one in. And there's like four or five of those all around there. Alright folks, so uh, after we did some soul searching, um, I found unless you're buying a used one off of eBay, you cannot get a part that's still made in the United States. They are all from China. And I'm just not willing to go that route just yet. So uh, we went and took the big, uh, big chips off. They were around this surface area. Um, there's a big ding right here that I'm going to have to cl clear up. But uh, I think that's when I chucked it out in the scrap pile out of aggravation. But uh, we'll get that cleaned up. And get the new seal set in. I'll show you what I'm going to do on that. Ta-da! So this oil seal is a little bit different than the one that came off of there. It didn't have this raised rubber flange on the outside surface. Uh, the one that came off that is. That being the case, I'm actually not going to put anything on here. Um, those imperfections are in there to a degree where it should be okay. And this should be a seal, uh, in essence that gap will be contained back behind where the oil surfaces are. Otherwise, I was going to put some Loctite 545 around this outer edge, but I'm not going to do that since this actually has an oil seal there. So we are going to put this bad boy in there, the old-fashioned way, with the, the spacer tool and a 2x4. I just have a hard time... believing that's supposed to go in dry given that this is wider than this surface and has those raised ridges so I am going to use just a touch of fresh oil on it just a touch
So that spacer tool sits flush right in there. That'll give you the perfect dimensions there. So that is the seal installed in the housing. On to the next step. Okay guys, I apologize for the lack of light, but uh, oh, here we go. This is the back of our crankshaft. The rear main seal goes around that. That little adapter that I've been cleaning up that I showed you has six bolts that bolt into the back of the engine, right? And then there's four bolts that go through the oil pan up into that same bracket, okay? Just so we're all on the same page as far as that goes. Now, I'm actually going to put on the uh, repair sleeve for this. And uh, I'm going to put a touch of uh, Loctite 545 on there. Just to make sure it doesn't spin or come back off anytime soon. So... That's where we're at at the moment, and I'm going to try to get this set up to where you guys can still see, I hope. But then again, with as worn as that crankshaft is, I don't think that's going to be an issue. That is one of, the reasons, ugh, one of the reasons why these repair kits are not exactly recommended. Bye. <sighs> ET's done. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to give that a little bit of time to cure. Um, double check, looks like there might still be a little bit of oil right there, but clean that up. And because the seal housing is slightly damaged in a couple of places what we're going to do is even though you're supposed to install this back gasket dry we are going to go ahead and put just a little bit rtv both on the block side and on the bracket side just to make sure we get a good seal there we got a good seal here we are not putting anything on the bottom because after we get this part done we're going to go ahead and lift the engine up drop the oil pan and clean everything up on the bottom real good and then we'll redo the oil pan seal and that's going to be part of that process so 
that's where we are on that. And if you guys have any questions on this, if, you know, basically you want to know why I did it a certain way or, or whatever, just hit me up in the comments section. All right? Okay, on with the show. All right, here we are back with the uh, everything else. Seals in the way. Instructions for the RTV, we just snug it down a little bit here, finger tight, let it dry for an hour, and then we'll come back and actually torque it. But for the most part, that's done. That's repair sleeve installed, which you can just barely see in there with a new seal. So that oil leak should now be stopped forever. And the last one back here is going to be the oil pan, where you can tell it's been leaking there too. So more to come on that. But for now, we are done. Okay guys, so just a quick note about uh, repair sleeves on the rear main seal for the 5.9 12 valve Cummins. There are very few companies left that even offer these anymore. And I don't know if it's a lack of understanding that these are million mile engines or just that nobody cares. But the people that do have them are, uh, sorry, we got, Shaky camera going on again. So the people that do carry them are charging $150 at the very cheapest that I saw, or even as high as $300 for a seal and a repair sleeve. Don't fall for it. Remember, these Cummins engines were putting a lot more things than just a 96 Dodge Ram, or a 90s model Dodge Ram. They were put in service trucks, farm equipment, all kinds of heavy duty equipment. And I had already purchased my seal for 30 bucks before I realized, you know, that I needed a sleeve. And I dug around and dug around and finally I found a tractor supply place that uh, offered this ultra thin repair sleeve that's made to be used with a standard rear main seal. So I didn't have to buy anything else that was special. So it was $30 for that. With the, it comes with a little install tool and you saw that I, or you will see that I had a little difficulty putting it on. But I got it on there, straightened it out and everything. And uh, $30 for the seal, so 60 bucks. So less than half the price of the cheapest place I found that offers them both together online. So try not to be in a hurry, do your research. And you should be able to find things for a decent price still. You know, how long that's going to last, I don't know. I, I think nobody understands how long these engines last as long as you maintain them. But maybe somebody will eventually figure it out and understand that the one or two companies out there that offer the things that want to charge $500 for 
a $20 part, that there's other ways to get things. So just be smart, shop smart. All right, take it easy.